Nebraska's soybean crop remains in notable shape and ahead of progress. 70% is rated good to excellent and 80% of the crop is setting pods nine points ahead of the state's five-year average. The USDA's crop production report projects Nebraska's soybeans will average 52 bushels per acre, second only to Illinois' 54. Now on the downhill slope of the growing season, farmers can begin to think about scheduling final irrigation passes of the year. Once beans begin maturity at R7, they no longer use water. But determining how much water to put on before then can be tricky. At a Nebraska Soybean Board funded field day in Auburn Tuesday, Gary Zobeck explained how farmers can time the final watering using the beans on the site as an example. Well, these beans are in the uh, beginning pod fill, the R5. Uh, we've got some beans that are a little uh, later or, or at R4. Uh, R4 beans are going to need about nine inches of water to maturity. These here are going to need about six and a half, six or six and a half inches. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you need six and a half inches of rain because you might have something in the profile yet? Yes, uh, depends upon every situation is going to be different. Uh, these here probably have about two inches of available uh, moisture in the profile. Uh, so that means we're going to need probably about four and a half more inches either come in the form of rainfall, hopefully rainfall, or potentially irrigation. You say that it's important to leave room for rainfall at the end. Is that what you're talking about? Well, that's our goal whenever we monitor and manage irrigation on corn or soybeans. What we want to do is, in most years, leave the profile as dry as we can without hurting yield. So that's typically we use a 50 or 60 percent depleted area. That way during the off season, Mother Nature will refill it with that moisture that's free. At what point then do you want to be at 50 to 60 percent of, of As we get to R7 nearing maturity, that's where we'd want to have it at either 50 or 60 percent depleted. Kind of depends upon your soils, uh, your uh, a willingness uh, to, you know, yeah, go trust, about your yeah. risk tolerance. <laughs> uh, you have some tools that are available that can help producers determine how to schedule their final irrigation of the season. Tell me about those. Well, first of all, we've got a NEB guide uh, that's uh, very popular. It it's, can be used to schedule irrigations for the last one for corn, soybeans, and grain sorghum. Uh, we also have our crop water app that we've just released an update to it where it lets you put in your sensor readings or your estimate of soil moisture. You put in your crop stage uh, and your uh, uh, maturity and then you calculate. It will tell you how much more moisture you're going to need to get your crop to maturity. If someone hasn't used um sensors before, what would you recommend or why would you recommend they try them out maybe next year if they haven't put them in yet? Well, we feel the sensors uh, give you another tool to estimate the, the status of your soil water. And that, you know, that's one of the key things. Uh, we don't want to keep it too wet. We definitely don't want to keep it uh, too dry. And it doesn't have any feelings. You put them out there and they just give you a number. Then you use a chart to you know, estimate the water that's left. Because if I'm going out and I'm feeling it, if it's hot and dry, it's going to feel, feel really dry. If it's cool, wet, and cold, it's going to feel wet. Whereas sensors, they, they don't, don't have lie. those feelings. They don't lie. And ET gauges as well? An ET gauge is another great tool. Uh, we really like them because they take into account the current uh, conditions, the temperatures, the solar radiation, the wind, and all that. And then they give you a good estimate of what the crop ET is. You know, August, you know, I can go out during county fair and it's been 100 degrees out there, but my ET gauge only dropped an inch because we had so much humidity, then I know I don't have to be worrying too much about irrigation. If it drops two and a half inches, I'm going to worry a whole lot and know, depending on my stage of growth, if, if it's during uh, the reproductive stages, I'm really going to need to irrigate. And so it's in my backyard. It's representative of several miles around. Uh, I feel that it's a great tool and it's pretty economical. 
On the Market Journal website, you can find a link to a NEB guide on predicting the last irrigation of the season, as well as a link to UNL's Crop Water app.